to Ed, Ed and Alan Holmberg's. I was there, his uncle. And uh, June went to St. Paul to Salma and Erna Tornblom's. I was her uncle. So the three little kids were there with me and my mother, and I worked in the Oreo Cafe. Well, I, I used to see Alvin and June. I didn't see June as much as I see Alvin because he was, Alvin was closer. And then uh, he'd come home. He went to school in Decor, and then he'd come home and back to Decor, Viroqua, in the summer. And then he'd go back to school in Decor. And then, uh, but June stayed up in, in uh, St. Paul most of the time. And when, when was the last time you saw Nels? Oh, I must have been in 39. 39, last time I saw Nels was either in 39 or 40. Uh, Do you we know lived, when he died? He died in 42. Oh, where is he buried? He was buried in, in uh, Rockford, Illinois. He went down there to work. He was working in a hospital, and he got pneumonia. And uh, he didn't, it didn't, uh, he died quick. He wasn't sick too long. When you moved to Viroqua, you worked in the Oriel Cafe. Were you, um, you had three little kids. Were you looking for, looking to get married again? No. I was working, I was thinking more of the, when I worked at the Oriel, I was looking more for something to do to support the kids. And, and uh, then we had renters upstairs in that house, and they were friends of Harold Jasperson and so he'd come there to visit them. So then one night, uh, they were going down to where Soldiers Grove to a dance, and they wanted to know if I wanted to go along, and I said, no, I couldn't. They wanted to know why. I didn't have any answers. <laughs> so I went with them, and ever since then, why, we went out quite a bit. And then in November 7th, a uh, year or so later, why then, we were married. We were married November the 7th in 1942. Uh, what, where did you get married and what was the wedding like? We were married in Waukon, Iowa, in the minister's house. And uh, it was just, just uh, the, this is, I can't remember. It was two women that was our, uh, there was no bridesmaid and bridegroom, you know. There was two women that was, uh, oh, signed the marriage certificate. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was it. And then we went back. He went, he was working at Sidey's grocery store at the time, and then I was working at the Oriole, so then we just went back to Viroqua. Where did you live when you got back to Viroqua? We lived, uh, we rented a house over on, uh, by the courthouse, and we went, moved in there in November, and then in March we moved out on a farm. And uh, we lived on this farm until 45, and then we moved to La Crosse. What do you remember about living on the farm? Well, there was a lot of work. We raised tobacco, and, and had some hogs and milk cows, and and we had raised corn and hay and all that. The kids, did your kids have to do chores like you did when you lived with your uncles? Uh, not too much because, well, they did some, yeah. They did some, but not as much as I did when I was smaller. <clears throat> when we lived on Pine Street, they were going to school and uh, Neil wanted a slingshot <laughs> and I said, well, if they wanted something, they had to earn it. They had to help with the dishes every night. And uh, I said, then they, I'd get them money so they could buy the slingshot. And to this day, I hear that they had to work for a nickel slingshot. <laughs> the next child born was Catherine. That was Harold and my daughter. 
and she was born October 29th in 1943. We lived on uh, the farm then. And was she born in a hospital? She was born in the Viroqua Hospital. Was she named after anyone? No, we just decided that Catherine and Annette was the names that we picked and and we just picked the names and that was it. What kind of kid was she? Very quiet and very, very, very quiet. Didn't say much, wasn't noisy or anything. And how did her two brothers treat her? Fine, yeah, they were, everything was fine. It, everything went all right. What, do, what story do you remember about Catherine as a child? Well, as a child, I worked at Fort Hopkins grocery store, uh, drug store, and my mother worked in Grandview Hospital, so uh, after she got, when we moved to uh, Pine Street, there was, she was old enough to go to school. So she went across the street to Washington School, and, and then uh, outside of that, why, then from there we moved to French Island. And then she went to school on French Island. I don't remember too much about her because we were always all working and busy at home and everything. What year did you leave the farm? We left the farm in 45 and we moved into a small apartment on 6 in Mississippi. And then from there we moved to Holcomb, Minnesota. We lived was there. Was that in La Crosse? I met six of Mississippi was in La Crosse. And then we bought a place in Holcomb, Minnesota. We were over there three years and then we moved back to La Crosse. What did you do while you were in Holcomb? I didn't work, but he worked for a, a farmer that had a tavern in Holcomb and he did farm work. He was fixing fences and all that stuff for this fellow. And uh, he worked for train before and then they were laid off, so he was doing this till he got back a train. And when did you move back to and La Crosse? We moved back to La Crosse in 48 and then he went back to train and he has been there ever since. Where did you move when you moved back to La Crosse? We moved down on Pine Street in 1611 Pine. That was down by the college. How, how and we lived there for uh, four years, and then we bought this place on French Island, and, and then we lived there 15 years. Why and then, did you decide to move to French Island? <clears throat> we moved there. We bought this place in 52.